right now, you know, gun violence continues to be a major public safety concern across the five boroughs. Over the last 48 hours, there have been at least two separate fatal shootings, one in Queens, another in the Bronx. Another shooting on the Upper West Side injured an 81-year-old innocent bystander. Mayor de Blasio says the NYPD doing its job instead, instead blaming the courts here. That there's been consistent uh, progress in terms of gun arrests, consistent progress in terms of reducing shootings. We got a long way to go to fix everything that got broken because of COVID. But I want to reiterate, if we really want to solve the problem, we need a functioning court system. It's staring us in the face. One part of our criminal justice system is not functioning. Everybody else is. We've got to fix it. So we're joined this morning by Police Commissioner Dermot Shea for our biweekly discussion, these concerns and others. So good morning to you, Commissioner. Good to see you this morning. Hey, good morning, Dan. So, Commissioner, I want to begin with this topic, right, the gun violence epidemic. For months now, we've been yeah. talking about this. Mayor de Blasio claims progress being made, but I just want to be honest here. It doesn't feel like it to residents, right, who have been dealing with these shootings day in and day out. Why is it that progress that you are seeing or saying is not translating to what we're seeing on the streets? Well, I, I think people are frustrated, and, and it's hard to talk about progress when you still see you know, incidents of gun violence and people, uh, you know, that's top on their priority right now, public safety. So I, I, I don't think that's, you know, a surprise to anyone. Yeah. There, there, there's no doubt, Dan, there is progress being made, but it, there's a lot of work still to do. You know, the court workers have actually responded to the comments we just played from the mayor about courts and things you have really said, too. The court saying they have been back at full strength since May, but attorneys are not quickly prepared to handle trials. In a statement to AM New York, for instance, a spokesperson for the unified court system said trials are being held, but for cases to be tried, you need the prosecution and defense to have their cases prepared, which isn't occurring in a number of counties. So what is happening here? Yeah, well, I, I think the worst thing we can see now, Dan, is just finger pointing all the way around. I think the numbers speak for themselves in terms of when you look at you know, Dan, if you go back a year or so, literally everything I've said has come to fruition, from bail laws to the courts shutting down to the, to, to the implosion of yeah. uh, court cases moving because of discovery. You know, um, there's a lot of issues going on. I, I worry about what I can control and getting the cops out there, keeping them working, m making steady improvements. I mean, when you look at August, I think we're going to be down about 30 percent in shootings okay. from last August. It's still not good enough. But there, Dan, there is no doubt that we need the courts operating at a different yeah, yeah. level than it is now. And community groups, violence interrupters, we've talked about this right out on the streets. They don't seem to be preventing the shootings. Are you reassessing how you're addressing gun violence? Well, we know what works, Dan. I, I mean, you need, you, need, uh, you need the best trained police officers in the country. You need good resources. You need them out there. And, and you need to stop these people that are carrying guns and then hold them accountable. You know, we, we've talked about the back end. I mean, there's, there's a backlog of cases for sure. Um, you know, uh, violence interrupters are a piece of it, but the, yeah. the main thing that we need is, is we need our detectives, we need our cops, and then we need consequences when they right. make these cases. There's a, Dan, there's a cycle of violence. Last night in the Bronx, we had a terrible shooting where it's, you know, uh, two, two brothers, I believe, both shot. You have an arrest that's uh, being announced right now. That person was just paroled for another shooting. So, like, there you're showing a police-involved shooting guns. Yeah. Two days later, we had another police-involved shooting in the Bronx. It's the, the cycle of violence of guns, gangs, and no consequences is what needs to be interrupted. And, and you know, to the court system issue, Dan, uh, you've heard me say it. Go look at the, the levels of incarceration yes. at the state and the city level. And then you get to the, the heart of the issue. All right. You know, when we talk about public safety, it can mean a lot of things, right? And a lot of it has to do with what we're seeing on the streets in terms of COVID as well. And there's a mask mandate now in place for officers who are not vaccinated. They also have to wear masks when interacting with the public in schools, public transit, so on and so forth. But there's also this yep. video of an officer telling a subway rider in Queens that they can't tell him when to wear a mask. So will officers who do not mask up, what will they be facing in terms of discipline here? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I saw that video. I thought it was uh, very inappropriate on the on the side of the officer, quite frankly. I mean, we got to be better than that. So, 
you know, I, I've spoken to Rodney Harrison on that issue. We will take care of that. I mean, there is an expectation. Um, number one, if you're vaccinated versus unvaccinated, we know that we've been struggling on the vaccination front. That should be cleared up by mid-September because it's going to be mandatory and, unless you're uh, yeah. tested and, and showing a negative test. But if you're not wearing a mask when you should, you, you have to be held accountable, and we will take care of that. Uh, and what will that be? What will the discipline be? That could range, Dan, from instruction. It could range from a lot of things. Okay. Uh, I will keep that in-house. Gotcha. And we only have a few seconds left here, but I do want to talk about the 20th anniversary, of course, of September 11th. That will be this weekend coming, um, excuse me, next weekend, 20 years. What are you doing in terms of keeping everybody safe? Well, there's certainly a lot of planning going on. Uh, myself, Martin Matarazzo, our chief of counterterrorism, John Miller and Tommy Galati on the intel side. Uh, we have to be vigilant. We, we held a, a rather large meeting in preparation mm -hmm. for this weekend's Labor Day parade. And I will tell you that um, the topic of counterterrorism and safety and, and being prepared and vigilant came up multiple times. And we're going to be out there this weekend. There's no credible threats against New York City. That's okay. first and foremost for, for New Yorkers to know. Um, but, but it is a time of uh, certainly uncertainty across the world right now. What's, ha with, with, oh, yeah. what's, what's with happening, excuse me, in the Middle East? And we all have to be vigilant. If you see anything out of the ordinary, report it to your local police. Understood. Commissioner Dermot Shea, always, always appreciate the conversation. I like the polo look this morning, too. NYPD Hispanic Society. Sporting their wear. There you go. All right, Commissioner Shea, thank you very much. See you next time. Thanks, Dan.